Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to this YouTube channel. It's your guy Igor here. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about the immigrant mistakes that we do coming to a new country. This video is related to Canada, but it can also be applied to Australia and USA. What are the biggest mistakes that immigrants make when they come to Canada? Well, first of all, going to the big cities. All the immigrants that are getting their permanent residency, well, they love to go to such cities in Canada like Toronto or Vancouver, where they settle, and majority of immigrants do. But what people do not realize is that the bigger cities are usually more competitive. It's more difficult to find a job. It's more difficult to find affordable housing. It's more difficult to get around. It's actually a, like a big mistake to go to a bigger city. If you are an immigrant and you're looking right now to immigrate to Canada or Australia or, or USA, New Zealand, I'm telling you guys, don't go where everyone else goes. If you want to live a good, humble life in a city where you can afford having a house, where you can afford having your own place and live a good, humble life, the trouble with the big cities is that housing is extremely expensive. The market is oversaturated by immigrants like yourself who are new to this country or who have been here for a while searching for jobs, competing between each other. It can be a real tough challenge, especially if you're coming from a third world country to Canada and you don't have a lot of savings and you can't afford buying a house for millions of dollars, then don't go to Vancouver or Toronto or you have to live out of the city and spend hours in traffic or on a bus or on a train going to work. And that might be not the life that you have imagined for yourself. Another mistake immigrants make is choosing where to settle. They go to a neighborhood that's looking attractive instead of trying to find a place where it's closer to where they work, where it's more reasonable. Settling in downtown can be too expensive. You might not be able to afford it. And immigrants, they make mistakes by settling anywhere. You have to look at this criteria when choosing where to settle within the city. First thing is your work location. Do you already have a work? How far is it from your workplace? Are you going to be spending hours to commute? Or is it really close to your workplace? The next thing is the price and affordability of the rental places. Can you actually afford living next to your workplace or it's going to be cheaper having it for a little bit further away but not too far away to save money? The mistakes that immigrants make is not looking at any of those criteria and just finding a place that looks nice and kind of looks cool on the map but not realizing the geography. Because when you sign up for a rent in Canada, it's usually six months to one year rental agreement and it's a cancellation fee there you cannot really get out of it and then once you sign up and it's not an inconvenient location for you for your kids for your family to to go to school the neighborhood you don't like it and then you have to move you have to spend money for moving expenses once again you might have to buy more furniture the stuff that you purchased for that place within that one year might be no good for you and it's just a lot of money expenses time hustle and waste of your energy so make sure you plan well where you will settle and plan in advance if it's temporary place where you're going to be living don't buy too much of furniture if you're planning to move be smart about it do some research what i suggest you do is even on go through the neighborhood use google maps Go to a street view, walk around the neighborhoods, see the convenience stores, the grocery stores, the schools, and how far it is from everywhere, and what are the prices there. So these are some tips for you to consider when you are renting a place here in Canada. Next mistake immigrants make is job search. People do not realize how competitive it is. If it's a popular country for immigration such as Canada, lots of immigrants are here. People do not start searching for jobs before they come to Canada. Literally, the best option is you have a job before you come here. Or at least start searching and getting ready for the search even before you move. Before the date of your tickets, start applying for jobs 
The mistake immigrants make is they come to Canada, they think they are professional, they think it's going to be easy, and then they get stuck searching for jobs, and they start running out of money. And money here, they run out real quick. You'll be out of your money before you even know it. So start searching. And then what happens is you get into a trouble. A trouble is where immigrants just settle for anything. You go and you you see how difficult it is. You spend three months, you spend six months searching for a job. And then you're like, you know what? I'll just take anything. At this point, I need anything to pay my bills. And they grab it and you take it and you lose your confidence. You lose your time, your energy, and your well-being by taking those bad jobs. Be ahead of everyone. Start searching for jobs now. By the way, I'm going to be working real soon with the people who are helping out with the resumes. So if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description of this website. When I sign that partnership, you'll be able to access it. And those guys and me will help you build a resume to find a job in Canada if you're planning to come here. Like Western Standard. Really, that resume can actually work for any country. U.S., Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. The next mistakes immigrants do not realize is working standards. And that's how employers take advantage of the immigrants. Other people take advantage of you. Because if you don't know the working standards, you will suffer. Let me explain it to you. People take advantage of you. I've been taken advantage of. My wife have been taken advantage of. And other immigrants have been taken advantage of until they realized... The standards of working here, the lunch breaks, all the things that you're entitled when you join the company. A few things that you have to know about employers. You have to know your lunch breaks and other breaks that you're entitled to. Employers are not telling you lots of the times and employees are too scared, especially immigrants. Coming to a new country, coming to a new culture, you're terrified. You're like, I don't know if I am even entitled to take a lunch break. I don't know how many breaks I'm supposed to have. And then what happens is you keep on working. And I've been working for a company for a very long time, for a few years. My wife has been working. And it took us like years to realize that not only the lunch breaks that we had, we had two more 15 minute breaks in addition to the lunch breaks. I did not know that I can refuse working overtime. I did not know that I do not have to work overtime. I have to work eight hours as it is per the employment standards and anything over that, yes, I have to get overtime, but I can say no and the employer cannot really do much about it. And you have to know that, that in these countries, in the world's most developed countries, you can say no to overtime and you have to find out with your employers if that's something that is, you know, like, I, I didn't know about it, but you can actually do that. I know some employers are like, they don't like it, but really lots of employers, they cannot make you if you don't want to do that on overtime. You have to work your eight hours, but you don't have to work 12 hours. Next thing is payouts. I have been cheated on how much money I got paid. I have been cheated on overtime, banked hours, small Miserable employers in my history here as a new immigrant, I did not know the legislation. And if you know the legislation in Canada, really, you can go back to the government and you can get all of that money that you got cheated by from labor standard. For example, here in Alberta, you can just call and there will be an employee government official who is going to come and make sure you get paid for what you worked for. Your breaks, how many hours you're working and how much you get paid is really serious matters and never be afraid as a new immigrant to ask your employers about your money, about your hours and about your breaks. Me, my wife and lots of our friends made the same mistake and it took us years to realize, to know our rights, our responsibilities, what we are entitled to, the lunch, the pay and the hours of work, what are the requirements, what we have to do and where we can say no and where it's the right thing and where is the wrong thing to do. I'm hoping, guys, this is making sense to you and you really appreciate it. And the biggest appreciation for this video is a big fat thumbs up, guys. So make sure you smash it for me because I'm telling you something from experience, from years that took me years of struggle after immigration 
to realize, to understand those things, where you can say no to overtime, where you can say no when someone says don't take your lunch breaks, and when you can say give me my money if you've worked for it. Another mistake that immigrants make coming to a new country and finding a job working is speaking the same kind of language, their own language, to another employee. So you come to Canada, I've been sitting at my office, I've been speaking Russian to a person, why on different workplaces uh, you always find someone who speaks your language it's a co-worker might be a team member might be someone in management might be a colleague doesn't matter but people really get annoyed when they hear you speak in your own language my language is ukrainian or russian they really didn't like it people get upset if you speak hindi or you know, your own language or Arabic language, whichever is your language, Hispanic language even, people might not understand what you're saying and they think you're gossiping about them. I had people telling such things as, that's not professional to speak your own language. And I was like, like excuse me, it's my language. It's, it's not, there is no such thing as me not being professional by speaking more than one language at the workplace. But people get annoyed. People think you're gossiping. Trust goes down. And to be honest with you, everyone is happier if you keep speaking English language, if it's the working language at your workplace. And I'm just telling it to you, not because you have to or it's unprofessional or anything. I'm just telling it to you as an advice to have more friends, less enemies, and more success in a new country. Next mistake that immigrants make coming to a new country is living the same kind of culture. When you're coming to a new country, you have to adapt, you have to assimilate. Otherwise, it's extremely difficult. If you come to live in Rome, you have to live like Romans do. You know, if you go to Egypt, you have to be like an Egyptian guy, right? Come to Canada, you have to live like Canadians do. I'm not saying you have to completely forget about your culture, but you have to remember this, that it's a different country. Country, Everything is different here. People are different, especially in the world's most developed countries such as Canada. You get, you know, Australia, New Zealand, USA, you get variety of culture. They all assimilate. And if you're staying within your culture, it will be a huge barrier for you to find good relationships at work, build good relationships and networks on the street and have, you know, have a happy life in a new country is going to be extremely difficult if you follow your own traditions only without willing to accept the new, new place where you are living in. So that's an important thing is if you don't want to give up your own culture and you don't want to accept the new culture, it's going to be very tough to move and live in a new place, you might be depressed, some people will go back to their home countries, not being able to deal with the realities of a new culture. On the other side, guys, there are so many Russian stores here in Canada and everywhere. There are so many Indian stores everywhere. We get Latin stones, we get Italian stores, you get Jamaican stores, African stores, everything. And Chinese stores like TNT, for example, any culture, You'll find your own food, you'll find your own community, but you'll still have to adapt. And that's how you can succeed and be happy in a new place. Next mistake immigrants make is failure to build a credit history. So, you know what credit history is, right? Well, if you don't, I'll explain. Basically, it is like a ranking system where you get points for paying off your credit card. So, for paying off your debt. It's basically a score of reliability. Are you paying your bills on time. If I give you money, be, me being a bank, will you give it back to me on time or would I have to struggle getting it back? Basically, there is a credit bureau and they can calculate the points. In some countries, we have no idea what credit history is, but in Canada and other developed countries like US, Australia, and New Zealand, credit history is a biggie and if you don't have a good credit history, you might not get your mortgage approved, you might not get your car loan approved. It's difficult to get money from a bank if your credit score sucks. So make sure you pay your credit cards on time, you pay your bills on time, and you have to build it. And by building it, you really have to take loans. You have to have a credit card. When you come to a new country, get a credit card. Get the one which you don't have to pay anything for it, no sign up fee, no annual payments, and Pay for it before they charge you any interest. So get a credit card 
and as soon as you get a bill just pay for it before any charges any percentage starts accumulating this way you show everyone that you're paying on time you're showing everyone that you're borrowing money and you're returning it you're building a good credit history it could help you buy a car buy a house and get lower interest rates in future and way less trouble with the banks guys if you really like this video what's up make sure you subscribe to this channel guys by the way i also drive for uber part-time right now and if you ever consider driving for uber in canada i will leave a link in the description of this video for you so you can sign up and you actually get a referral bonus from my invitation because i'm also an uber driver and i drive only part-time right now i have a full-time job and i do youtube guys if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to see more. Check out my latest videos. Subscribe to this channel here. To my check out my family channel over there. And there will be two videos over here. I'll see you soon. See you tomorrow.